Hello everyone, welcome to the GOE Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the GEO Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, do consider subscribing our channel because we are going to cover each and every topic related to geography on our channel. Now in today's session on settlement geography, we are going to learn about the three concepts that is the concepts of metropolitan regions, the concept of conurbations and also the concept of megalopolis. So watch the video till the end. And all these concepts and their important aspects will be covered and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about the concepts of metropolitan regions, conurbations and megalopolis. So first of all, we start with the concept of metropolitan regions, metro city concept. So what is it? Basically a metropolitan area or simply we say metro is a region consisting of densely populated urban core. And what about the periphery? Less populated surrounding territories. That is what we also learned in the previous lecture as it's umland, the surrounding area. So a densely populated core and a lightly populated surrounding area which is interconnected where the share of industries, commercial areas, transport network, infrastructure and housing happens. So the Greek roots if you observe the word meter if you observe its mother and policies for city. So it's basically a mother city, the big city amongst all smaller settlements around. That is the basic concept of a metropolitan area. Further, if you observe, according to OECD, what is it? Metropolitan areas are defined relying on the concept of functional urban areas. Now this is very interesting word which is used here by OECD called functional urban areas. What is this functional urban area? Where the urban functions happen and urban functions are shared from core to its periphery. That's very important. The world delineation of metropolitan areas that is also known as estimated functional urban areas or EFUAs rely globally on the gridded data that we observe. So what we observe here in simple way is the city area and its nearby area from where people commute to the city and go back. Right. So this is called a metropolitan area. So cities plus commuting zone. In total, this can be understood as a simple metropolitan region, metropolitan area and this organization of economic cooperation and development OECD, if you remember, this is an international organization and also intergovernmental economic organization of 38 countries. So this definition of metropolitan area is given by OECD. Now further if you observe, the concept of metropolitan region was first time propounded by Murphy as metro city and the great scholar Mumford as metropolitan city. So this Mumford, Louis Mumford's work is considered as one of the pivots or one of the pioneer works in urban geography. So Mumford defined a metropolis as one of the stages in evolution of urban settlement. Right. So in the previous lectures, we have also talked about the evolution of urban settlements. If you have not watched it, do go to the playlist on settlement geography and you can watch the video there in details. Further, if you observe, as per Census Commission of India, a metropolitan city is one having a population of over 4 million, that is 40 lakh plus people living there. Right? That's according to the Census Commission of India. So metropolitan region is basically what? It's the um land of metropolitan city. Right. So a wider definition would however also include certain more things that is at least a million population or more where air travel, railway passenger commodity flows and long distance telephone calls are there. These services are there. Right. So further if you observe in context to India, we have these areas served by metropolis in India. So if you observe this area Delhi metropolis, Kolkata metropolis, Mumbai metropolis and Chennai metropolis and in between them Ahmedabad, Jaipur, Kanpur, Nagpur, Hyderabad, right, Pune, Bangalore. These are certain metropolitan regions in India. So what you observe these metropolitan cities and the regions is talking about the regional development or urban development in the regions across, right? So what you observe, what is the method to delimit it or we can say how to delineate metropolitan areas around the world? 
So there are two variables for it, two components for it. What are the two components? Cities or urban centers, that is the core urban area, that is the first thing, where population of at least 50,000 people and 1,500 inhabitants per square kilometer is supposed to be living, right? So that is the first area to delimit or delineate, right? And here GHSL data is used nowadays, which is global human settlement layer. If you have heard of GPS and GIS systems, so GIS systems is the geographical information system using the satellite data remote sensing data where we use global human settlement layer and it is fondly used by European Commission to delineate the areas of the core city or the core urban area and the second one obviously is commuting zone around it as we know OECD definition so commuter zone surrounding the city basically socio-economically integrated to the city right so if this is a core area of the city the periphery area where the commuters live go to the city and they come back. So to and fro relationship starts to happen. So this is the functional relationship that happens around. So what you observe here, a metro area in simple way comprises of few things that we need to know. So multiple jurisdictions and municipalities, neighborhoods, townships, boroughs, then cities, towns, exurbs, suburbs, counties, districts, you have heard all these words in the previous lectures we talked about on various aspects of settlement geography, isn't it? So now let's understand some example. So most metropolitan areas are anchored by one core city as we know. So example is Paris metropolitan area. Then you have Mumbai metropolitan region, Mumbai and Bombay. Remember the old name was Bombay. So New York metropolitan area. Now remember these are the bigger areas where core city is there and then there is a suburb with which the interaction goes on, right? Then further, there is another way to look into it. In some cases, these metropolitan areas have multiple centers of close to equal importance. So multiple centers close to equal importance coming together like an agglomeration. So their examples are Dallas, Fort Worth, metropolitan area that is Dallas and Fort Worth together, Islamabad and Rawalpindi metropolitan area that is in Pakistan and Rhine and Ruhr in Germany, Randstad in Netherlands if you observe, these are certain areas which are kind of an agglomeration. Right? So you can understand this is the way we look into or delineate these particular metropolitan city and region. Then what we observe, the difference between two words is also very important and it's many times confusing. So metropolis and megacity, what is the difference? Now remember there is not a common definition across the world. So metropolis is essentially a large city, a mother city which has a surrounding relationship, right? But the criteria of population to define a city varies from country to country. So for example, in India if you observe, greater than 1 million population is called metropolis but greater than 10 million population is called a mega city, right? So that's important. Then Canada, if you observe, greater than 5 million population is called mega city. So this is the variation that we need to look into, right? Further, if you observe the next concept of conurbation. So what is this conurbation and who talked about it? The gentleman here, Sir Patrick Geddes. He was a sociologist and remember coming from the schools of Comtean positivism. If you have not watched the videos on positivism, it's there in the evolution of geographical thought playlist. So Comte, remember August Comte and the scholars like Frederick Lapla, they influenced this person, Patrick Geddes, and he coined certain words like the concept of region in architecture and the word conurbation. So what you observe, basically it's a continuous urbanization in simple ways and it was first time used by Patrick Geddes in his book that is cities in evolution 1915. So almost 100 years have passed when this concept started of conurbation and remember conurbations are supposed to be extensive urbanized regions, continuous urbanization where it is there between the towns and cities and there is a connectivity link which is very important for conurbation. So unlike megalopolis or metropolis, what is difference? Conurbation is basically many cities with their extension and suburban expansion that have fused together. So it's a fusion of several metropolitans together or several small towns and cities together. Then it becomes conurbation, right? So it's a fusion concept. Now if you observe here, the concept was proposed by empirical studies of New England region of USA. 
So if you go to New England region of USA, you'll find this fusion of urbanization where several sub-cities have combined together to form a region. So conurbation is a continuous urbanization in a region comprising of number of cities, large towns and other urban areas together. So what you observe? Examples of some conurbations. So you have boss wash conurbation in USA. Then you have golden horseshoe conurbation in Canada. Then you have midland conurbation. If you observe, this is in UK. So we have Birmingham, Coventry, Doodley and all these areas combined together, Southampton. Then you have Tahio conurbation, which is there on eastern coast of Honshu Island, Tokyo, Yokohama, Osaka, these places in Japan form a major conurbation. Then if you observe the Yangtze and Pearl River Delta conurbation in China, so this is very important where all the special economic zones are situated, all the production areas of China and it's an economic hub. So these are major examples of conurbation of the world. But what about India? So in India, conurbations really does not exist in the way it exists in the world. But definitely we have potential conurbation areas where in Delhi, Kolkata, Delhi, Agra, Mathura, Bhopal, Delhi, Jaipur, Ahmedabad, Mumbai, Bangalore, Mysore, Mumbai, Pune, Vadodara, Surat, Mumbai, Punjab, Mangalore. These are the combination belts. And remember, these are the corridors, economic corridors, if you observe, right? So further, if you observe, there are three types of conurbation in India. As you can see in the diagram itself, this is uninuclear, where there is a one major city and the road outside connecting it from the outside. Then you have nuclear conurbation, two different nuclear with the connectivity. And then you have polynuclear conurbation. So not a single city, but different city combined together like this. So uni, bi and poly. So if you observe certain examples like Kanpur and Lucknow are bi-nuclear. Then you have Mumbai, Thane and Kalyan as polynuclear. Further, if you observe huge conurbation in the process of development is Agra, Delhi and Kalka region. Then if you observe Saharanpur from Delhi is another route. So this is where you can observe this entire region from Kalka to Agra and then another route is Saharanpur, Muzaffar, Nagar and Merit combined together. This forms a conurbation, right? And it is still developing. It is not as developed as we talked about in the New England region or other places. So that's what we need to understand here. Further, the process of urbanization, if you observe, till now what we have learned is urbanization needs expansion so urban sprawl happens metropolization happens then also urban sprawl happens further conurbation happens with the connection of these and further when urban sprawl happens then forms a megalopolis right so further when you observe megalopolis formation the levels of urban living goes to the highest end highest level of consumerism is available there so we say cosmopolitanization so what is a cosmopolitan city it's megalopolis or close to megalopolis city where people from various parts of the world live. Different languages, cultures, customs come together. So this is living together, right? The diversity is the greatest in cosmopolis. So for example, Mumbai in India or New York in USA can be understood as a cosmopolitan city. Now further, if you observe the concept of megalopolis. So megalopolis is given by John Gottman, who was a French geographer, and he coined the word megalopolis in 1961. Now remember this gentleman, he was actually influenced by the work of Patrick Geddes, right? So he took the reference from 1915's work and then he coined the word megalopolis here, looking into the Boston and Washington DC region. Now, it reflects a later stage of metropolization that he says, and he studied further about the urban ecology. So this concept is coming from the urban ecological understanding. It means how people also behave socio-economically and not just the concrete urbanization. So the social and economic aspect was put together. So Gottman defined its population to be 25 million. So supposedly we can say that any city, any big city which has more population than 25 million can be categorized according to Gottman as megalopolis. But then there was another scholar called Doxiadis and he defined it and said that 10 million is the threshold value. So any city which is bigger than 10 million population can also be categorized as megalopolis. So this is the volume of work. If you see here, John Gottman, megalopolis, the urbanized northeastern seaboard of the United States. This is the work. And now if you observe, 
of megalopolis in simple mathematical relation if you want to know metropolization plus cosmopolization so when metropolis becomes bigger and bigger and starts to become a cosmopolitan area then it is supposed to be called as megalopolis right so it has these characteristics which is listed here if you can observe high industrial growth centrifugal force high growth of service sector then you have isolationism of the society individualistic society small families nuclear families luxurious lifestyle highest level of consumerism right so consumption culture if you remember rostow's growth model so it is the fifth stage the advanced stage and high per capita income agglomerative growth pattern and development of derived economic sectors not just the primary secondary tertiary but derivative of these sectors combination of these sectors are the features out here in megalopolis so if you observe world megalopolis examples you see here london paris rome moscow chicago shanghai sydney tokyo toronto all these are the megalopolis of the world the world cities that we say then what we observe here in india indian megalopolis can be understood here as the four major polarity that is the metropolitan region and around it that develop into megalopolis so kolkata megalopolis if you observe 65 million population delhi more than 46 million population chennai more than 20 million population and mumbai more than 80 million population so these megalopolis have the combinations of nearby areas if you observe right and then they have become a huge area covering the urban services right the connectivities of the core city with the surrounding region and making it a huge urban area called megalopolis so now when we have discussed about the concepts of metropolitan region metro city conurbations and megalopolis in the lectures to come we'll be talking about the functional classification of town and cities and several other topics so stay tuned stay safe keep watching and learning and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos amongst your acquaintances so all the best wishes take care